Welcome, colleagues, to the UCT Annual Awards 2021. We are here virtually to honor you who work so hard to build excellence into the University of Cape Town. I wish so much that we could have this event in person, but your safety is our first priority. So we have planned this program to extend to you as best as we can in this virtual format, our heartfelt appreciation. As your host, I want to start by thanking some of our students and alumni from the South African College of Music and UCT School of Dance for putting us in a celebratory mood with that rousing performance. Celebrating the part you play in UCT's success is not a luxury. It's a necessity for the university as well as for you. It is thanks to you that UCT is about to complete a second academic year under the many stresses COVID-19 has put on all of us. Thanks to you that students and staff members continue to receive the support they need from different UCT departments working on campus or remotely. And thanks to you that we remain Africa's top university in the 2022 Times Higher Education World University Rankings the QS 2022 rankings, US News Best Universities 2021, the Center for World University Rankings 2021 to 2022, and the Shanghai Rankings Academic Ranking of World Universities 2021. Here are a few more proofs of our institutional successes. This year, UCT placed in the top 101 to 200 band of the Times Higher Education Impact Rankings, which measures the impact of higher education institutions against the UN Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs. In the rankings for individual SDGs, UCT placed in the top 100 for reduction of poverty, gender equality, and reduced inequalities. UCT has also launched an online portal dedicated to research relevant to the SDGs. 
UCT graduates are among the world's most employable according to the 2022 QS graduate employability rankings. UCT placed 95th in this year's rankings, the second consecutive year that we placed within the top 100 universities in the world. UCT launched the Community of Hope Vaccination Center at our Forest Hill residence on 30th August to serve the campus community and the broader public as a resource for the Western Cape Department of Health. This is one of the many ways we make social impact in our community. And this year, UCT's proud list of A-rated researchers increased by two, with the rating of Professor Michael Clays from the Department of Chemical Engineering and Professor Giona Tuccini from the Department of Italian Studies. A ratings are awarded to researchers acknowledged as leading international scholars in their fields. Colleagues who had their A ratings confirmed for another five years are the late Emeritus Professor Jean Clements from the Department of Physics, Professor Rajan Mestri from the School of African and Gender Studies, Anthropology and Linguistics, Honorary Professor Robert J. Wilkinson from the Institute of Infectious Disease and Molecular Medicine, Professor Jill Farrant from the Department of Molecular and Cell Biology, and Professor Mark Sons from the Department of Psychology. In September, Professor Chital Silal and Professor Michael Clays were honored at the National Science and Technology Forum South 32 event for their outstanding research contributions to science, engineering, technology, and innovation in South Africa. Every individual award is a sign of the high level of support that UCT staff give each other. Honoring you for all the ways you serve UCT is an important part of connecting as a community. And we are holding this online celebration because of the personal contribution you have made to UCT. The Department of Human Resources tells me that this program will honor more than 150 recipients of long service awards, 106 ad hominem promotions, two recipients of the Distinguished Teacher Award, the two outstanding researchers who have received the Alan Pfeiffer Award, and the recipients of the UCT Vice Chancellor's Awards for Service Excellence, Global Citizenship and Transformation. And altogether, we are recognizing more than 250 colleagues who contribute to UCT's high standards of service, education, and research. Even as we've been practicing social distancing, we have seen your hard work. Your efforts are bearing fruit, and we are grateful for all that you mean to this university, especially to the students and colleagues you serve. I'm not alone in celebrating your work for UCT. Here is our Chair of Council, Ms. Baba Luangonyama, to express the Council appreciation of your work. On behalf of Council at the University of Cape Town, I welcome you to this 2021 edition of the UCT Staff Awards. The goal of UCT, governed by its strategic vision 2030, is to distinguish itself as a world-class global university by providing thought leadership and solutions to the challenges of Africa and the world. The dream is to draw from the extraordinary social and cultural diversity creativity and capacity for innovation of all our staff and students to contribute to making the 21st century the African century. To look at ourselves as the university and create together the top global university in Africa. A university that is uncompromising in its transformative intent. Deeply rooted in academic excellence, and that strives for social, environmental, and financial sustainability. I wish to congratulate each of you upon the achievement 
that has made you an important part of this event and this distinguished institution. If it were not a health risk in this time of pandemic, I wish I could shake each of your hands and thank you personally for the commitment and skills and energy you have brought to your work at UCT. And together as a community, we have committed to Vision 2030 to unleash human potential, to develop critical thinkers and leaders, and individuals who will create ripples in their communities and on a global stage who will provide a different set of solutions for the world's challenges and in so doing, creating a better future for all. You have all made a major contribution to this vision's fruition and you should be commended for your commitment in creating the highest standing this university continues to hold in higher education in Africa. As a business leader and a long time council member, I am keenly aware of how important both excellence and stability are to an institution such as UCT. The recent years have been full of various headwinds and disruptions for all of us. These disruptions include the protest movements centered around transforming higher education across South Africa. The various lockdown measures as a result of COVID-19 and the fire that destroyed part of our beloved campus in April. And during these unprecedented and uncertain times, our focus on our vision has become more important than ever before. The headwinds and challenges we have experienced are a testament to our resilience. You have all played a part in keeping UCT on an upward trajectory through these events, as well as through positive transitions, such as the change of leadership with appointment of the new vice chancellor, the new deans and new department heads, amongst others. Through your hard work and creative thinking, we have maintained our place as a leading university in Africa. Through every change, your steady hand has helped to keep the university performing at its best. Your work has made it possible for us to continue to thrive and excel as a leading research and teaching and learning institution. As a result of COVID-19, many things remain uncertain across the world. However, the quality of UCT staff members, their passion for excellence, their courage and innovation, and their commitment to the institution have kept the university rock steady through every recent change. We must celebrate even these difficult circumstances and recognize the positive aspect that these challenges time have made distinct for us. Thank you for keeping this institution moving forward. I commend you for your service and dedication.
pieces, pick up the pieces, pick up the pieces. It is rare to find an employer whose staff stay on board for as long as 45 years. This is a sign of how special UCT is and how special you, long-serving colleagues, are to UCT. Over the years, you have helped make this institution and the UCT community what we are today. I have the honor of presenting to you 103 colleagues who have served UCT for 15 years of continuous service. While we cannot salute you in person, we can admire your faces as they come up on the screen.
I have the sincerest gratitude for the years of working relationships and achievements I've experienced during these years on campus. My love of people has always helped me and I have co-workers to thank for making life really interesting. Progress does not stand still. It has been wonderful to be part of the progress and my advice to anyone starting their journey with UCT would be to take every opportunity to do everything possible, to harness these times and to keep developing yourself. Also use every chance you get to mentor and guide students and staff around you so everyone works to the best of their ability. Over time I have loved the opportunities to grow and innovate and I've enjoyed this the most. So as I close I'd like to quote from the wonderful and inspirational Michelle Obama. We need to do a better job of putting ourselves higher on our to-do list. Thank you for allowing me to share my thoughts and memories and my wish is that every soul crossing the UCT threshold experiences huge success in all their endeavours. God bless you all. My name is Jean Peterson, a recipient of the Long Service Award, celebrating 15 years of proud service to the University of Cape Town. It has been 15 years of remarkable growth and incredible milestones. When I started as a bus driver, transporting UCT students and staff from UCT campus and residences, I embraced the job wholeheartedly and carried it out to the best of my ability. It is that sort of dedication that saw me climb the corporate ladder and proceeded a step further to become an office dispatcher, planning and directing the work of others armed with invaluable practical experience of the work itself. This, of course, would not be possible without the love and support of colleagues in the general UCT community. We have made the 15 years that we celebrate seems like it was just yesterday. And for that, I express my sincere gratitude to the University of Cape Town. I could not ask for a better employer. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Now we'll congratulate the 42 colleagues who have worked at UCT for 25 years. My name is Koli Lecho Chozi. I started at UCT from 1996. I started as a cleaner. I was working at Student Union Upper Campus and Jameson Wall. I was cleaning, like picking dirty stuff and arrange the classes while the students, they will write the exams. Uh, I try to move myself to upgrade myself doing the short courses like laboratory skills, laboratory assistant and uh, computer skills. From there I move from uh, <coughs> student union, work in anatomy as a laboratory assistant. From anatomy I move to work to waste area as a, a, a supplier to the laboratory. Now I'm doing liquid nitrogen and I also assist in classroom facilities. Like if there will be a exams, we arrange, we arrange to prepare for the student to write exams. 
So for now, I'm still uh, doing a laboratory assistant also on other labs. And as I'm working doing liquid nitrogen, uh, I thank UCT for my long service and to upgrade my mind. So thank you very much, University of Cape Town. My name is John Peters. I'm the Residence Maintenance Manager in the Properties and Services Department at UCT. I, it is a great honour for me to talk about my 25 years working at the University of Cape Town. I started at the University uh, in the Maintenance Department as a Plumbing Artisan and was later promoted to the team leader of the maintenance section. I had the opportunity to study at GSB where I obtained my diploma in general management and, uh, and operations in the maintenance field. I later became the area ma maintenance manager for the residences and uh, I'm really proud to have worked at UCT whereby I could share my skills and pass on my skills to my colleagues and, and fellow workers uh, in the department. I've witnesses, I witnessed a lot of uh, changes at UCT in terms of the landscape changing, new buildings, and also in terms of transformation with the students and staff. And I want to end up by, by saying to my colleagues that will remain behind and wish them good luck and all the best in the future. Seven colleagues have worked at UCT for 35 years, since 1986. That was a hectic time to be at UCT when students were protesting against the apartheid government and the conscription of white South African men in military service in the South African Defense Force. In that decade, in opposition to the government, UCT embarked on a successful program of recruiting black students who were housed in student dormitories in defiance of the Group Areas Act. So here are the loyal colleagues who came to us during that time and have worked faithfully at UCT for 35 years. Good day all. My name is Junaid Lucas and I am recipient of the Long Service Award for 35 years. I'd like to thank the late Mr. Arthur Pochenpool and Mr. Rodney Jacobs for the opportunity to have been employed at UCT Libraries in 1986. I'd also like to acknowledge my fellow chaps who are still on this journey at UCT especially, Jonathan, Vernon, Russell, Muhammad, Krieger, Randall, Amina, Wendy, and my wife, Kashifa. I thank you. Hi, I'm Shirley Whitmore, the proud recipient of a service award from the university for a 35 year long working career. My journey over the past 35 years at UCT has finally come to an end. And it is now my chance to thank you all most sincerely for the fun, laughter, and tears traveling through this period. Besides working hard and giving my best, I've had many amazing experiences at UCT, from brying at the tennis courts, playing squash for UCT, swimming in the UCT dam, to experiencing the disastrous fires and pandemic while coming onto campus each day. I am grateful to have been part of such an amazing team of people. None of the past year's enjoyment and exciting innovations would have been possible without your collaboration, both in the 28 years with science and my final seven years here in the humanities faculty. I need to compliment and thank all my colleagues throughout the university for their support. You are always willing to assist when I needed it most. I appreciate all you have done. Thank you. This has been an awesome ride with you all. Thank you so much for every single part you played in my life, no matter how big or small. We laughed and cried together 
and that is what made it so interesting. Best wishes for everything ahead. Once again, Bayadanki. In Korsi Kakulu, thank you very much. Remember, UCT is only as strong and successful as you make it. Keep up the good reputation and have fun. I certainly did. Finally, it is my honor to recognize two colleagues who have served UCT for an amazing 45 years. Trevor Adams and Peter Jafter, both from the Faculty of Health Sciences. On behalf of UCT, I thank you for your loyal contribution to this university. Good evening, colleagues. UCT is committed to excellence in teaching and learning. The Distinguished Teacher Award is the highest accolade awarded to teaching staff at all levels. Tonight, we honor two outstanding teachers based on nominations by their colleagues and by their students. I'm Marlon Swai. I'm a lecturer here in the Department of Anthropology at the University of Cape Town, and I was also an undergrad here many years ago. If I think about what this award means, I have to think about what I did when I first won it, and that's I called some people that really switched me on to the idea of being a teacher. And those were people that introduced me to how to use hip hop as a form of kind of critical thinking. And I call them just to say thank you because I wouldn't have pursued this if, if it wasn't for what you did to really ingrain in me the, um, the power of this thing. And so I, I think that that moment speaks to the potential victory that such an award is for um, a generation of students that look at lecturers as myself as an affirmation that their very being is being recognized in the university. And I like to think that I have a responsibility to kind of stay on um, the pulse of that, um, to not drift too far from actualizing that affirmation because I know what it would have meant for me. So to know that a student kind of hears me <laughs> kick a verse in a lecture theater and that then gets recognized as acceptable teaching but actually teaching that is worth you know university-wide recognition it does something useful for students who i very much um, would, would would love to con continue to serve what i think defines my teaching style is to work with what is in the room i look at first of all every individual and i'm totally interested in what it is that has brought them there, what it is that is their life trajectory that brings them there. And so the composition of the class um, becomes a moment of magic and I, I love getting students to understand that. From things as simple as moving our seating arrangement around, to, to facilitating engagement in different languages, to using poetry and music, um, he's sort of brought some of the really high theory down to a grounded level in a really rigorous way that it makes dealing with this theory feel relevant and exciting. What I hope is not that students go off and do hip hop studies. What I hope is that they use this as an example of finding something that is interesting to you, finding something that is a spark for you and pursuing that and knowing that there is value in pursuing that which is going to drive you, you know, over the next 10, 20, 30 years. I love the students. I love just the ability to have um, this interaction with young people every day, 
who have different ways of learning, who have different um, ideas that they want to explore and flesh out. And, and so it's really just about the students for me. It is very difficult to live in a world that is rapidly changing in front of our eyes and every day everything we love or we hold dear is getting obsolete at a dizzying rate and not to think of the past. So I think uh, the, the fastness of the world, the mind-blowing rate of change makes one curious and um, that's where we begin to think what is this change about? That's history. I grew up and got my initial education in Calcutta which is a very lively city people are very opinionated all the time arguing politically active uh, called the cultural capital of India and I plugged into various networks and uh, started um, even tr trying out a little bit of uh, uh, original historical research even at a young age but I received my formal training in history in Presidency College Calcutta and later at the postgraduate level in Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. I think Bodhi is a fantastic teacher. I also think that he takes teaching very seriously. I think he enjoys it. So uh, I think he's one of the kind of few academics that I've seen who really puts so much of themselves into their teaching. And I think it's, uh, yeah, it's something that he really uh, invests in. And so I think that when you invest that much in something, um, Definitely, this is, you know, this is, I guess, one of the natural outcomes. He is one of the most erudite academics I know. He commands a vast body of knowledge. His interaction, his conduct in the classroom, you know, he would like assign six, seven students uh, certain readings, long, difficult readings and without not much of a piece of paper or pen. He will interact, engage with each student on those particular readings right off the top of his head. One of the reasons I wanted to come to UCT uh, was to be able to immerse myself in the study of African history. And um, over the years, what I realized that the best way to learn African history is to learn it with my students in class. Receiving the Distinguished Teacher Award was very humbling. I truly believe that whatever is being recognized here, is, it belongs properly in a collective, in the wonderful, congenial, conversational community of my colleagues in the Department of Historical Studies. You need to be aware of what the limits of classroom teaching are. Because classrooms can only teach students to ask questions. For answers, they have their lives.
It is time to honour the two recipients of the prestigious 2020 Alan Pfeiffer Award, the Vice-Chancellor's annual prize in recognition of outstanding socially responsive research that has demonstrated relevance to the advancement and welfare of South Africa's disadvantaged people. The 2020 recipients of the Alan Pfeiffer Award are Professor Catherine Ward of the Department of Psychology in recognition for her exceptional dedication to the prevention of violence, especially against children across South African society. And Professor Ambrose Wonkham, Director of Genetic Medicine of African Populations, in recognition of his work describing novel variant genes relevant in congenital hearing impairment in populations of African ancestry, his discovery of gene variants that affect long-term survival of sickle cell disease in Africa, and his introduction of prenatal genetic diagnosis of sickle cell disease in both Cameroon and Cape Town, thus increasing reproductive options for at-risk parents. Professor Kathy Ward's work and her, and her research in psychology is groundbreaking because it combines um, intellectual brilliance, uh, an understanding of violence prevention, of child and adolescent psychology and of family psychology with the most pragmatic and, um, and applicable approach to, to building an evidence base. I'm somebody who wants to change things, make people's lives better. Um, and, and psychology always combines that, not just the wanting to help, but with the fascination about what makes people tick, and then also the science of how we intervene well, and that's where I've really found my niche. One of the key ways to interrupt the cycle of violence is to prevent violence against children. Parents who use corporal punishment and more severe forms of violence are modeling violence as a way to solve problems. And if we can have parents who model peaceful solutions and who help children see what they should be doing, it should hopefully diminish violence between parent and child immediately. And then as that child grows up, they'll be less likely to use violence in their own intimate relationships as well as, as in other spheres. So these programs, the way we've designed them is that they are very suitable for use in low and middle income countries, resource poor contexts. We have cartoons that parents look at, not videos, um, and use those in the groups. We, we've also worked hard to make sure that this is really available for community-based organizations. So it's affordable for them to take it and use it. And so that's been my, my commitment of building a non-violent country. And, and now, um, uh, to, with, to my huge delight, to be able to make a contribution across the globe um, as our, our parenting programs, which were tested here in South Africa, are now being given to other countries to, to work with and to use for the same sort of goal. Her programs are now being delivered in 29 countries with hundreds of thousands of families. And within South Africa, she's worked so closely with the National Department of Social Development, with the Department of Health, to really integrate these programs into the systems that we deliver to, to the most vulnerable families in the country. I have the joy and the privilege of working with wonderful colleagues around the world the Philippines, Thailand, uh, Eastern Europe, um, lots of places across Africa. That has been a real joy as well. Kathy is in this because what she wants to do is to change South Africa and change the world for the better. And it is exactly that that she has achieved. She is absolutely, utterly deserving of this wonderful award. I think this is a wonderful recognition, not only for me, but for the whole team um, who have been involved and, and the team who are involved, in fact, in taking these programs across the world. Um, to have this kind of work recognised and valued actually means a lot to us. So my name is Amhuas Wonkem. I'm Professor of Human and Medical Genetics at UCT. I work in the Department of Medical Genetics in the Faculty of Health Sciences, Department of Medicine. When I started my training in medical genetics, it was important for me to quickly have a research niche. 
and sickle cell disease was an obvious choice. This is a disease that is eminently African because 80% of the children that are born with this condition are born in Africa. This is a condition that evolved in Africa about uh, 10,000 years ago. Uh, the first mutation was in a first a person in Africa. This is the most common monogenic condition of humankind. This is a condition for which there have been a very, very few investment in research and care and for which even up to today, it is estimated that 50% of children that are born in Africa with the condition without treatment will not see their fifth birthday. So it was obvious that as an African geneticist and one of the rare doing genetics, I had to focus on the most impactful condition that may make the difference in Africa. He focuses on uh, conditions that are actually neglected and affect mostly uh, African populations. For example, his work on sickle cell disease. And in most of the um, mortality that you find across the world, the most affected population are African populations. The impact of having uh, been the winner of Allen Pfeiffer, first of all, is being part of a very prestigious of group of researchers within UCT that over the past decades have been recognized for their research work. And being part of that uh, privileged group should give visibility of our work. We do our work with public funding, so it's important that we give back by showing what we found and Alain Pfeiffer put a light on what we found. Every award that we won really is a, is a pleasure and it's a privilege, but it's important to say it's not my work alone. It is the recognition of the work of many, many people. It's the recognition of many years of work, starting with our mentor, uh, that provide us the capacity of doing this work with our students that actually participate to the research, and the patient participants that offer a drop of blood to allow us to work, and also the collaborators. So it's actually, I'm, a, I'm only the messenger. It's actually the work of many, many people. And if this work is recognized, it makes us a very, very feel privileged to have contributed to something. And as the price say, to the welfare of African most disadvantaged people. He is now one of the global figures in terms of genomics. He teaches us that you can really start humbly, but persevere, you'll be recognized. Colleagues, it is my privilege to lead you in celebrating this year's Adominem promotions. This follows a rigorous process of assessing not only staff performance in teaching, supervision, research output, administration and leadership, but also participation in socially responsive activities. All these criteria speak to staff passion and the way in which they inspire their colleagues and their students.
Hello again, colleagues. Excellence is such an important quality of our work at UCT that we have created a special category of award that celebrates how you demonstrate your commitment to excellence in your citizenship, your service, and in your creative approach to transforming the UCT environment. Nominations for these special Vice Chancellor's Awards for Excellence are made by you in recognition of the excellence you see in your colleagues' work. I was amazed this year by the high number of nominations we received. These nominations demonstrate two important facts about UCT colleagues. The first is how many of you have been performing at an exceptionally high standard during a year of extreme pressure in the work environment, the home environment, in the measures we still need to take to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Yet so many of you have used the opportunity to perform at incredible standards. The second remarkable thing I have noted is how many of you have taken the time to acknowledge the hard work of your colleagues by drafting a nomination to honor them. This shows true collegiality and community spirit across UCT. This fact warms my heart as much as reading the wonderful nominations that were drafted. In reading the minutes of the committee that made the final decision on these awards, I realized what difficult decisions they had to make to select just one awardee for each category from such a broad field of deserving colleagues. In fact, the committee could not decide on just one recipient for the Global Citizenship Award or Service Excellence Award. So each of those awards will have two recipients. So if you were nominated for any of these awards, please take a moment to congratulate yourself for being one of the truly amazing colleagues who deserve to be honored this year. And whether you received a nomination or not, take a moment to recognize that you are an important member of an exceptional community. The Global Citizenship Award recognizes individuals or teams who have demonstrated excellence in leaving out the UCT mission through areas of service, the pursuit of knowledge, the dignity of the human being, and contributions to the common good. This year, we have two recipients for the Global Citizenship Award, both of whom are involved in initiatives that support the rights of women. I will introduce them in alphabetical order. The first recipient of the Global Citizenship Award is Liesel Hermanas for her service to the Hanover Park community. Liesel is the on-site mental health officer for the perinatal mental health project in Hanover Park. Her case management work requires active engagement with policy, shelters, child welfare, mental health specialists, emergency health practitioners, poverty relief agencies and family members to ensure her clients have access to as comprehensive a package of support as possible. The women served by Liesel and her team face extreme socioeconomic adversity, including community and domestic-based violence, family dysfunction, food insecurity, and social isolation. They suffer high levels of depression, anxiety, substance abuse, and challenges with taking up available support and parenting. A medical practitioner in the Hanover Park community writes, the COVID-19 pandemic amplified the plight of many of our clients. Whilst the rest of us were wondering how we could support these women, Liesl sprang into action. She recognized that the lockdown and all its restrictions, as well as the impending births, had heightened the pregnant women's anxiety levels. She started the COVID-19 Mamas campaign and encouraged the rest of us to donate to the cause. She was able, through her passion and leadership, to collect much needed goods for the moms and their babies. She was also able to mobilize individuals, families, businesses, and other NPOs, and ended up with so many donations that she could extend the support to other facilities. Her actions during this time were truly inspirational, and many of us felt really grateful 
that she created that space for us to be able to contribute. In so doing, she also created a network of support and collaboration, which I hope will endure beyond the pandemic. Liesl Hermanus' extraordinary commitment is celebrated in this Vice Chancellor's Global Citizenship Award. Congratulations to Liesl Hermanus. The second recipient of the Global Citizenship Award is Anne Isaacs for her leadership in countering sexual and gender-based violence. UCT has been at the forefront of leading change for effective survivor-centered reporting and case management of sexual and gender-based violence and discrimination. As project manager of the Special Tribunal for SGBV cases, Anne has been recommended to national and international organizations to act as a technical research advisor, trainer, and legal advisor. In particular, she has contributed extensively to the Africa End Sexual Harassment Initiative. This has included policy and legislative reform around sexual harassment, developing best practice benchmarks, and training of judges in partnership with the International Association of Women Judges Kenya chapter. Anne is currently working on a gap analysis for gender discrimination laws for 52 listed African countries. A colleague at UCT comments, I cannot recall a matter that I brought to her attention that she did not respond to quickly, professionally, ethically, and mindfully. She has also worked tirelessly in reforming institutional policies, processes, and procedures to ensure that justice for all concerned parties is played out in reality and is determined, boundaried, and highly skilled. And Isaac's leadership in countering sexual and gender-based violence across Africa distinguishes her as a worthy recipient of the Vice Chancellor's Global Citizenship Award for 2021. Congratulations to Anne Isaacs. Chancellor's Award for Service Excellence celebrates exceptional and significantly improved services to UCT staff and students. And this year, we also have two recipients for this award, which I will announce in alphabetical order. The first recipient of the Vice Chancellor's Award for Service Excellence is the Health Sciences Research Office for enabling the Faculty of Health Sciences Research Enterprise. The Health Sciences Faculty Research Office has evolved from an administrative function to a widely recognized professional and strategic hub that is the glue holding together UCT's massive and complex Faculty of Health Sciences Research Enterprise. It provides exemplary service to institutional research, enabling the work of the faculty staff, of whom 60% are research funded and constantly seeking grants. It supports the research work of the faculty's postgraduate students, of whom 2,745 were registered in 2020, including 670 doctoral students and postdoctoral fellows, of whom 119 were registered in 2020. The exceptional quality and professionalism of these services are considered to match and sometimes exceed those offered by far better resourced and capacitated fa facilities at the world's leading research universities. The Health Sciences Research Office's commitment, expertise, and energy is applauded in this Vice Chancellor's Service Excellence Award for 2021. Congratulations to the Health Sciences Research Office. <laughs> The recipient 
of the Vice Chancellor's Award for Service Excellence is UCT Libraries for providing virtual services to the UCT community in response to the COVID-19 emergency. Over the past few years, the UCT Libraries management team has been working towards a future-facing academic library. This strategy has informed research support, positioning the libraries in and as student spaces, capacitating the libraries for the digital age in all facets from preservation, digitization of resources, and access to research information to fostering a culture of the libraries as a learning organization for own staff. This approach was severely tested by the COVID-19 emergency, which required the conversion of a critical face-to-face -face service to a virtual one. The most powerful testament to this achievement comes from UCT students. In the student survey of 2020, three quarters of students said they used the library during remote learning far more than any other service. It was also the most valued service by the highest number of students. These achievements will have lasting future value and are recognized by the Vice Chancellor's Award for Service Excellence for 2021. Congratulations to UCT Libraries. to Emeritus Professor Martin Hall, the Acting Deputy Vice Chancellor for Transformation, to announce the recipients of the VC Award for Transformation. Thank you, Vice Chancellor. The Transformation Award honors the faculty or department that has taken remarkable steps to help drive institutional culture change. The team receives a certificate as well as the opportunity to display for one year, the stunning transformation staff. The staff was designed by artist Tami Kiti, who is based in Kailicha. It features a leopard, which is royal symbol across Africa. The proverb says that a leopard prides itself in its spots. In this staff, the spots reference the many noble cultures that converge at UCT to make up our rich campus community. This year, the award goes to Lara Foote and the Baxter Theatre Centre for the Zabalaza Theatre Festival. Under the guidance of Lara Foote, CEO and Artistic Director, the Baxter Theatre Centre has provided unique opportunities for theatre practitioners in and around the Western Cape by providing them with performance platforms where they can realise their creative concepts. The annual Zabalaza Theatre Festival is widely regarded as the premier platform of its kind in Southern Africa. Undaunted by the COVID-19 lockdown, the Baxter team worked innovatively to make the 2021 Zabalaza the best yet. Four productions were selected from the March Festival and each was showcased with mainstream sessions in September. Performed in English, Afrikaans and Isikosa, they were selected for their powerful and relevant South African themes, writing, performance, directing, and overall presentation. Since its inception in 2011, 11 of the best of Zabalaza's winners' plays scripts have been published, making them available to communities, schools, and community groups. Well over 500 productions have been showcased with close to 2,500 artists and theater makers participating. Through these sustained strategies, the Baxter Theatre Centre has been able to change the traditional landscape of audiences, artists and productions as it continues its commitment to disrupting and transforming in line with UCT's mission and strategic direction. This work is recognised through the 2021 Vice-Chancellor's Transformation Award. Congratulations, Lara Foote, Zabalaza and the team at the Baxter Theatre Centre.
We are coming to the end of what has been a really wonderful event. I am Royston Pillay, the University Registrar, and it falls to me to offer a vote of thanks. This event has again been a reminder of the truly amazing, talented people we have at our university. We acknowledge, celebrate, and cherish our UCT community. For the event itself, I wish to thank the Department of Human Resources and the Vice Chancellor's Office for their respective and collective efforts to make the event possible, for furnishing in a systematic and comprehensive way the details of the staff members who have been recognized for their achievements and contributions in service of UCT. I thank our performers, Carla Stokes Music, and students from the South African College of Music, as well as the UCT Center for Theater, Dance, and Performance, in collaboration with Bridget Reeve Dance Connection for their extraordinary performances this evening. These performances serve as yet another reminder of the jewels we have in the performing and creative arts, both at UCT and in the city of Cape Town. A special vote of thanks to UCT's communication and marketing department for their attention to detail, for their creativity and stamina, and expert organization of the event program and the related features, not least of which are the superlative videos that have created the celebratory ambience that I'm sure you and we have all enjoyed. Finally, colleagues, I thank each of you for giving our institution and all of us a reason to celebrate. UCT remains Africa's top university because of you. Thank you.